put your hands together as we welcome our beloved pastor, the Reverend Dr. Paul I. Bennett. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Please be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for the precious privilege of being in the house of worship one more time where we can honor you and bless you and give you glory. Hallelujah. Turn in your Bible, please, to Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. This is not a new scripture to us. This church knows Proverbs 29, 18. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Psalms, then Proverbs. Almost at the end, 29. We're not going to the 31 women now. We're just going to 29. Amen. Hallelujah. And then find verse 18. When you got it, say praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, 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 need you, I need you to understand, we're about to get wham today. So open up your spirit. Amen. Amen. We're about to get wham today. Amen. But it's a good wham. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can you see the signs of the time? Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Does anyone mind if I take my time this morning? Let's unpack this portion of scripture. Where there is no vision. Somebody say vision. vision. Let's go Hebrew. Chazon. No, 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 no. Like, like, like you're having an allergic reaction. Chazon. It's, it's not the seasoning, but it sounds like it. All righty? Chazon. Now, chazon is a prophetic vision, a redemptive revelation. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. It is knowledge of what God wants you to know from God. It's knowledge of what God wants you to know from God. Vision. Chazon. In other words, God wants you to know this, so he tells you himself. Mm. Mm. He wants you to know this, so he tells you himself. The challenge is, beloved, when we're walking around on this earth, in these earth suits, many of the times that we hear God's voice, it's coming through Ken's mouth. Or you hear... God's voice, it's coming through Denise's mouth. Or you hear God's word and it's coming through Reverend Elijah's mouth. So you say, oh, that's just the words of men. No, don't be fooled. Chazon comes straight from God. So why doesn't he just tell me himself? If God was to show up in here and start talking to us himself, I would be the first person to hit the floor. Now, the young people, y'all are fast. Y'all would be running for the door. I wouldn't even have tried. I would be just, Jesus, bam, hit the head. Just, ah. He is awesome. He's terrible. He's terrifying to behold in his glory. Amen. Amen. And knowing that and how important it is for us to get his word, he has put it in vessels that we can receive. Amen. Think about it. Salvation was put in a human vessel just so we could receive it. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Where there is no chazon, no knowledge of what God wants you to know from God, the people perish. The people perish. The people pora. Por what? No, no, no. Pora is the Hebrew word. Pora means to cast off restraint. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to take liberty. To run buck wild. To regress backwards. To be made naked and bare. To return to acting like a heathen. Wow. Let me try that. You can return to acting like a heathen even after you've had a legitimate counter with God, encounter with God. Now, I know some of my, my Christian brothers and sisters will, will, will preach that away and say, if you're acting like a heathen, it's because you never, ever really knew God. Well, I'm sorry. That would mean I'd have to go back in my Bible and white out a lot of scriptures that talk about apostates. 
Because apostates are all believers who've become apostates. You cannot be an apostate without first being a believer. Amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Where there is no redemptive vision, where people don't have the knowledge of what God wants them to know coming from God, yeah, I'll do that right now, Father. That is why it is so important, listen to me carefully, where you go to church and where you get your God information. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I thank God for, for Christian television. I really do. I mean, now I think there are like four different um, networks you can listen to. You've got Brother Copeland. You've got TBN. You've got... Um, um, Oh my gosh, what a star, um, Daystar, and I think there's even another one. Even the Catholics have their own channel. CTN. CTN, amen. But watch this, watch, 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 watch. Not everything that's being spoken by people who are Christian comes from God. I, I'm not trying to cast stones and I'm not trying to puff myself up. I told you we were going to get whammed today, amen. And so, in order to see the signs of the times, we must be hearing what God says and applying it to our lives, amen. 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 Am I teaching this morning? Yes. Are you hearing this morning? Yes. Are you learning this morning? Yes. Last question, will you apply it? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Where there is no vision, the people perish. They cast off restraint. But he that keepeth the law, somebody say the Torah. The Torah. The Torah, the word of God, uh, it's the body of prophetic teaching and instruction. Nobody really understands the mechanisms of how we got the word of God. It's too supernatural. The fact is, Moses was taught things that happened in the Garden of Eden without ever having been in the Garden of Eden. That means that our Bible is supernaturally scribed by the hand of God through the instrument of men. Some 30 or, or 35 years ago, God gave me a revelation of this one time when we were in Bible study in us, uh, Evangelist Hope's house, but, but she wasn't an evangelist back then, but she's one of the few ones of us that actually had an apartment. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the truth. Amen. We needed some place to go, and it was hers, so praise the Lord. And God told me, men may have written down the words, but God held their hands. Men may have scribed the sentences, but God was controlling the thoughts of their minds so that without any blemish, fault, or error, the scriptures, the Bible, so we know that we're not talking about other religious books, the Bible is the authoritative word of Almighty God. Amen, somebody. Where there is no vision, the people cast off restraints, but he that keepeth the word of God... The King James Version does this no version, doesn't do this just justice. It says, happy is he. When you think about happy, you think happy ha-ha. I think about hee-haw. Hee-hee-hee-haw-haw. See, y'all young people have no idea about that show. It's one of the silliest things to ever be on TV. But it was funny because there was just a picking and a grinning. Glory to God. It was funny. Amen. And we, when we think about happy, no, just look at the, the smiles around, you know, around the sanctuary right now. Amen. We think of that. No, 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 no. Happy is a big word. Somebody say big word. Big word. Happy is he. Happy is he. Those who keep the word. The word happy there, it means a whole lot more than just mere emotion. Hallelujah. It's the Hebrew word perish, porach. <laughs> no, 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 no. has nothing to do with para, but, but I'm just thinking. The para is what happens when you don't perish. I, 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 that just came into my mind while I was thinking. Amen. But the word here, happy, it literally means to advance, to go forward and fix. It means blessed. We've heard the Hebrew word esher. Blessed means to advance, to go forward. But as you're going forward, you're fixing, you're repairing, you're restoring. As you're going forward, things are getting better, not worse. Oh, if I had some time. Amen. It, it's, not, it's not a blessed life if you're going from day to day and stuff isn't getting better. It's supposed to get better. It's supposed to get better. You're supposed to get better. Your quality of life as a person is supposed to get better. Amen. 
Amen. Your Christian walk is supposed to improve. Your love walk is supposed to improve. Your prosperity walk is supposed to improve. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It says those who keep the word, watch this now, they're going to be esher. They're going to be blessed. They're going to, it, it comes from a root word that means to advance and set right. So you're going forward and you see something and you fix it. Going forward and you see something, oh, fixed it. Oh, set that right as I'm going forward. So it's not just advancement, but it's advancement that improves. Amen? Amen. Now that happens when we not just hear the word, not just believe the word, but when we put it into practice. Can I get a great big amen right there? Amen. So where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. We're going forward to fix. Somebody say forward to fix. Forward to fix. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, my introduction for today came straight from our um, point to ponder. And I know it's already been seeded in your mind, but this will now give us an opportunity to kind of, you know, have a little feedback. Praise God. Hallelujah. When a responsible, loving parent demands, not requests, obedient compliance from their little children, how do children respond? Talk to me. How do they respond? Pouting, rebellion. How about they say they're going to do it, but they don't? Do it with a bad attitude? Just like some believers in giving. If you're going to give in a bad attitude, don't give. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, why do they do that? Children respond foolishly until they are corrected and taught and learn to do otherwise. That's why Proverbs 22 and 15 says, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction. Now notice I said the rod of correction, not just the rod, okay? I know we have Jamaicans in the house, praise God, so let me just keep it plain. There are different ways to correct other than just beat them. Now that doesn't mean you don't have to beat them. It depends on the child. I said, it depends on the child. Dolores Bennett had, had a schedule for beating me. Amen. It was called daily. Glory to God. Because I needed it. Because I needed it. I was one of those childs who were just hard-headed, wouldn't listen. I had, you know, a, my motor went at a million miles an hour, and I was doing stuff before I even thought about the consequences. And she was an only parent. She had no man in the house because the man in the house did not take his fatherly responsibility seriously, amen. And so she had to do what she had to do. That's how come some mothers have to be so strict with their children because they're the only parent in the house. Amen. So they have to be mother and father. Amen. At least in my household, we have the, the wonderful uh, balance. You know, I, I do the, the hard, you know, stuff, amen. I mean, the spanking is usually me, glory to God. Although if I tried to spank my son now, he'd probably knock me out, glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And I don't even remember if I ever spanked Ashley because she, was, she just wasn't that kind of child. She just didn't need it. Amen. 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 It depends on the child. Amen. But notice here, it says, children respond foolishly until they are corrected and taught and learn to do otherwise. It's all in the learning. It's all in the learning. You know what I have found out in 35 years as a, as a teacher? Nobody learns who doesn't want to learn. Why can you teach the same lesson? You've got two rows of students. This row gets all A's. This row gets all D's and F's. Is it because these, these kids are just smarter? No, it's because something is instilled in these children that make them want what you're giving them. Yeah. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Now, let's go on to the harder part of this. When responsible, loving, anointed, and I add good-looking, Watchmen, pastors, demand, demand, not request, demand obedient compliance to the word of God in both your private lives 
and in your public worship in church circles. How do church members respond? Talk to me. And the place went wild. <laughs> I know when this happens, it's because God has rung a bell and people are thinking. Because I always tell you, I am your pastor, not your master. But now I'm talking about demanding compliance with the word of God. Do you know why I can do that? Because where there is no chazon, the people perish. Where God isn't telling you what he needs to get to you by himself, you will cast off restraint. And the lips that he will, lose, he will use, rather, will be the lips of his watchmen. And more often than that, 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 that's usually his pastors. Many times it's prophetic. It's almost always going to be individuals who are in the five-fold ministry. But it can be a parent. It could be a guardian. It could be a husband. It can be a wife. It can be a mother. It can be a father. But if we don't tell you what God tells us to tell you, you will cast off restraint even in the house of God and go buck wild. You don't believe me. Ken, I'll talk to you because you're smart. Amen. Praise God. I saw a video. Shocked the daylights out of me. It was a church. It was time to collect the offering. And there were two members of the ecclesia in the pulpit at the same time. They started fussing about who's going to take up the offering. It changed into a fist fight in the pulpit between the two members of the clergy. Now, that would be bad if it weren't for the fact that stuff like this happens in some churches all the time. You don't know how blessed you are. I said, you don't know how blessed you are. Let me put myself in that category. We don't know how blessed we are. To have all these years sat under the quality of teaching and leadership that we've sat under so that we know that craziness like that has no place in the house of God. There are people who go to churches like that every week just to walk in crazy. And they think it's normal. Why? Because they have no chazon. No one has told them, no, that's not acceptable in the house of God. That's not acceptable for the people of God. That's not right for the people of God. And the only person that ultimately will really, really, really hurt is yourself. Because you won't be blessed. You'll be walking and going ahead, but you're not fixing stuff as you're going. Who wants to walk a path of the busted? Who wants to walk a path of the defeated? Who wants to walk the path of the broken and say, I'm getting ahead? Been a Christian 50 years, got no one saved, no one healed, no one delivered, no one set free. You yourself are bound, you know, caught up in all kinds of wickedness, and you call yourself saved. What an affront to God. What an affront to your witness of the mighty power of the Holy Ghost that resides in you, the earnest, the down payment of our inheritance. What an insult that we would treat God so. And the only reason we do that is because we have not learned. Okay, let me ease up off the pastors. Some pastors teach. But some folk don't want to learn. I heard one person say, you know, I go to this church because of the choir. Not this church, amen. But the church that you, oh, I love the music. Listen to me carefully, church. Musica is one of the devil's favorite toys. You go into some churches, and what they are calling worship music is worship music, but not to the God we serve. And if you're not careful, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, you get caught up in stuff and you don't even know it because you did not get a chazon years ago. A long time before I became a pastor, I was still attending another church. And there was a sister who used to sing in the same choir with us, and she had like a ridiculous voice. And she was ministering in a park, in a concert. 
And I was telling her of this dream that I had. I'm so glad that God doesn't make all our dreams come true because some of those dreams are nightmares. Listen to what I wanted to do because I thought this was good. And if this crunches your toe, just look straight ahead. Nobody will know but God and you. I was saying it would be really good if I took some of these, this contemporary music that the people already like and just change the words to gospel that glorify God. And then people would like the music already and worship the Lord. That's one of the dumbest ideas a human being ever got on the planet. And yet it's prevalent in the church. I didn't get that from another church. I got that from my own stupid head. Because I did not have a chazon. All music has the spirit of its creator. If it's created by a witch or a warlock or somebody who's involved in the occult, it will have in and of itself that wicked, evil spirit. And the people who listen to it are confessing the word of that song and receiving the spirit of its production. Do you remember once upon a time, it really wasn't that violent to live in a hood? It was poor. It was poor. But it wasn't violent. It's the truth. I mean, J.J. lived right there. J.J. and Wilona. And we had good times. Anytime you need a payment, good time. We lived in the hood, and it was nice folk in the hood. But we just didn't have any money. The worst thing that ever happened to the inner city was the spirit of Lucifer set loose in hip-hop music. It became the national anthem of the hood, and the hood went from being poor to being wretched. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. Am I teaching? Are you hearing? Are you learning? Will you apply? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So no, that was a dumb idea. But there are some worship songs like that now. I already addressed that. Am I teaching? Are you hearing? Are you learning? Will you apply? Some of y'all need to delete some stuff out of your playlist. Especially all the single ladies. Pastor Cheryl and I attended a wedding ceremony years ago, years, years, years ago. And uh, it was Christians getting married. And we were invited to go to the um, reception. I now understand why Pastor Clinton and Pastor Sarah almost never go to wedding receptions. I understand it now. I do. And so I was there with my wife. Praise the Lord. They were playing dance music. One of my favorite old songs came on, Ain't No Stopping Us Now. I'm not going to finish it because all of y'all are waiting for me to do it, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and so my wife and Cheryl and I, we started dancing. And you know, just dancing with my wife. And then the DJ mixed in this song that I had never heard before. All the single ladies. <laughs> you would have thought Firecrackers went off in the backsides of the women in that place. <laughs> you had from 30 to 90 running up by all the single ladies. Oh, I'm like, you ain't single. You ain't been single for 60 years. <laughs> but the way they were acting was indicative of the spirit of the music. Am I teaching? Am I learning? Sorry, I'm learning too, but are you learning? Yes. So you've got to apply it now. Amen? 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 Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. The music industry as we know it is not the music industry that we knew. However, it was seeded 
decades ago. What you now know is that what we have today has been seeded for 75 plus years. They grew a seed, made it multiply. The seeds then matured. Some of them mutated and became even more wretched and wicked. And the music has become worse and worse and worse. And then they put videos to go with it. Wretched music videos to go with it. So you could visualize, that was aimed right at the men. You could visualize the debauchery. And that's when I told you, well, about 40 years ago, I stopped watching BET. I couldn't watch it anymore. Because every time, I, I, five minutes, even the commercials were wretched. I couldn't. You got to support your people. I do. I support Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Are y'all listening? Amen. Are you learning? Amen. Will you apply? Amen. All right now. There's a difference, beloved, between teaching and learning. What I'm doing is I'm preparing the meal. That's called teaching. I couldn't preach if my life depended on it, only when the anointing comes on me. But teaching, that's what I do. That's what God created me to do. But all my job is, is to put the meal prepared well on the plate now there's a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Learning is taking that which has been prepared, you cut it up, you chew it up, you take it in. That's your job. No one can learn for you. And that's why parents don't feel convicted. You've taught, you've trained, and sometimes they just act like they don't get it, guess why? Because learning has to be wanted. And if you have a rebellious spirit and you don't want to learn, you're not going to learn no matter how good the teaching is. Amen, somebody? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I keep looking over there. Amen. Don't know how that's happening, but I rebuke that clock in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I already know that I can't finish today's lesson. And I said, do y'all mind if I take my time? I think we get more out of it when I don't try to rush and I don't have to, you know, take stuff out. Amen. Amen. So maybe for the first time in the history of, of ministering, we'll have two vision Sundays. Praise God. Amen. But we're not talking about the vision of the church. We're talking about the vision of the times. Amen. Praise God. Stay with me now. Our prophetic lesson key. What you're being taught and your willingness to both learn and apply the teaching is the only way you can clearly see the signs of the times. We can see the same thing, but one person is a doer of the word, another is a hearer and not a doer, you'll see something completely different. You'll understand something a completely different way. You look at the same thing, one person will say that's so wrong, the other person will say that's so right. Same body of Christ. Now, God is not the author of confusion. So where the heck does confusion come from? Individuals are not doing the word. And when I say doing the word, I'm talking about the chazon. What did God speak to you? Because God usually speaks to you the stuff that he needs you to get because you ain't got it yet. Like he had to speak to me years ago, years ago, about my eating. I'll just talk about myself. And you have seen a change. But that change is not something that happened because God spoke. It happened when I listened and obeyed. God can speak till he's blue in the proverbial face. Until you obey his word, you will not be blessed. You're advancing, but stuff is being broken left, right, and center. And that's why the word of God says, uh, oh my God, the, the, the way of individuals that are walking in unrighteousness is always going to be tumultuous. That's the Paul I. Bennett version right there. 
The way of individuals who are not listening to God will always be jacked up. It'll always have unnecessary problems and issues. Amen. The Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. You're, you're, you're advancing, but you're not fixing, you're breaking. You're advancing, but you're not building up, you're tearing down. Do we want to do that? Am I teaching? Yes. Are you hearing? Yes. Are you learning? Yes. Will you apply? Yes. Hallelujah. Signs of the time. Some signs are direction signs. Like one way. Like one way. That's a, that's a, that's a direction sign. Other signs are, are warning signs. Like stop, yield. Other signs are limitation signs. You're going to love this one. 55 miles per hour. In the spirit, there are things that God is trying to get across to us, not because we don't know it intellectually, but because we have not taken it in spiritually so we can apply it. We know it. Sometimes there are scriptures that we know. We have memorized, and we still don't do it. Why? Because we don't want to. Thank you for that hmm. That, that, that was a pensive hmm. I like that. But, but isn't that the truth? We don't do it because we don't want to. Why was I a glutton for most of my life? I didn't want to obey the word on eating with wisdom. I didn't want to put a knife to my own throat. I wanted my cake and eating it too. And that's a good way to die early. Amen. Amen. That's not blessed. That's cursed. But Christ redeemed you from that curse. Keep eating that fat back and, 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 and you know, five slices of cake and, and, and a whole pizza and find out how blessed you are when you have a coronary embolism and you end up in, a, in, in hospital. That's not wisdom. Amen? Hallelujah. We're going to turn now to Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3. We're going to begin this and of course, we're going to have to come back and deal with it more in depth next week. Praise the Lord. Now, if Habakkuk chapter 2 sounds a bit familiar to you, it should. And why? We recite part of it every single week. We say, turn to the vision. Habakkuk chapter 2, and we recite verse 3. I'd like to start in verse 1. But before I read verse 1, let me give you the backdrop. Can you see the signs of the times? The prophecy of Habakkuk was written during a period of government transition. During a period of government transition. Can you see the signs of the times? Our republic is going through a transition. It is no longer a republic. It's never been a democracy. But we are speeding towards socialism. Can you see it? If you can't, that's okay. Keep serving God, you will. Written during a period of government transition from domination by the Assyrians to Babylonian domination. And all of this came, listen to me carefully, after a time of great spiritual renewal under King Josiah. They had a hallelujah time during his reign. And the entire nation of Israel turned back to God. Hallelujah. And then right after that, the Israelites quickly reverted back to spiritual wickedness. And it is in the context of this that the prophet Habakkuk laments God's apparent silence and lack of punishment for sin. God will not hold his anger forever. The wages of sin is still death. And a holy God must judge sin. He may not do it on our timetable, but as for God, his way is perfect. Hallelujah. 
The answer that God gives to Habakkuk is shocking because he tells them he's going to use the, the Chaldeans to teach his people a lesson. Now, why is that a big deal? You thought the Babylonians and the Assyrians were wicked. The Chaldeans were known for being the most horrific people, <coughs> wicked to the people that they, they con conquered. And the Chaldeans, well, if you put it geographically, those would be individuals from Iraq. Today, do you know where those Chaldeans are? Well, let me give you a hint. Modern Chaldeans are not Muslim. So in Iraq, they come under religious persecution. Modern Chaldeans are Catholic. Where do you think they ran to to get away from persecution? The good old USA. Most of them live right here. It's going to use the Chaldeans to judge you. Can you see the signs of the times? Hallelujah. I love my thinking congregation. I can see it on your faces. I used to get upset because, you know, I like, you know, amen, hallelujah, glory to God. You know what I found out when people do a lot of that? They're really excited, but they're not learning. Am I teaching? Yes. Are you learning? Yes. Because you want to, praise God. Hallelujah. Now, in this, Habakkuk is complaining and he's bellyaching with God. Why aren't you doing anything? And we start now in chapter 2. Habakkuk says, I will stand upon my watch. I will stand upon my mishmareth, my guard, my keeping, my preserving, my protecting by limiting. My protecting by limiting. Come on, wake up, wake up. Protecting by doing what? Limiting. The reason that God limits some of the stuff that we're exposed to is he's trying to protect us. If there was ever a time where limiting exposure is difficult, it's now. I used to tell the men in the church, look, if you have a problem with that internet, all you have to do is go to your wife with your computer and have her set the passcode. Then you can't go and open up and look at that naughty stuff. Now you don't need a computer. You've got a phone. It follows you. It calls to you. Limiting is protecting. The prophet says, I will stand upon my watch, what God has called me to do, and set me upon the tower and will watch, be really, really careful as I'm looking to see what he, God, will say unto me, the prophet, and what I, the prophet, shall answer when I, the prophet, am reproved and corrected. God doesn't say anything about correcting Israel other than this is what's going to happen to them prophetically. But the prophet who represents the people of God, had to have a mental shift. Not just complaining, not just belly aching, not just moaning about what God was doing or not doing, whether or not it suited us or happened the way we wanted. We had to get from God exactly what he wanted us to get from him. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now, 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 stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Your attitude determines your altitude. God did not answer Habakkuk's question until his attitude about correction changed. He says, I'm going to stay on my watch and look, 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 look. I will watch to see what God will say unto me and what I will answer when I'm reproved. Not just what God will say unto me, but what will be my response to what God says to me. 
God is speaking all the time. And many of the times we just go la 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 and ignore him. But when he speaks to us, he demands, not ask, he demands a right response. This is wrong. What's your response? Repent. No, I didn't say say I'm sorry. I didn't just say confess your sin. If you say you're sorry and you confess your sin and you never repent, you will never change. And that's why God wants you to change. Remember, he wants you to advance and stuff is being fixed as you're advancing. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. My God, my God. Am I teaching? Yes. Are you hearing? Yes. Are you learning? Yes. Will you apply? Yes. I know that thing beeped, but I need about another two minutes just to, to finish a thought. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what God will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me. Notice, when Habakkuk's attitude changed, the next words are, and the Lord answered me. Now, many of the times when God answers you, he's not going to tell you what you want to hear. But he will always tell you what you need to hear. And those of you who are parents and grandparents or you take care of children, you know that your children need to hear some things, even though they want to hear others. How many of you know the needs are more important than the wants? And God is a loving parent. Amen. Amen. Now, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision, the chazon, yeah, that same chazon, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Turn to the person next to you and says, here it comes. That phrase, appointed time, is the Hebrew word moed. It means feast season. For the vision is yet for an appointed feast season. For the vision is yet for an appointed, it's already appointed. It's already appointed. An appointed, and so his people, the Jews, could be a light to everybody else, even in the midst of their rebellion, because God will take a rebellious jackass and speak through him, if he needs to. The vision is yet for an appointed feast season. Some last piece, I'm going to give it to you. An appointed feast season. There are three feast seasons. And I'm going to unhook with this. I'm going to say them, you say them after me. Passover. Passover. That speaks about God's peace. Pentecost. Pentecost. That speaks about God's power. Tabernacles. That talks about God's rest. And all of those are appointed prophetically, listen to me, in time. Next week, it'll be my hope that God will, will grace me. And by the grace of God, I'll help you to see that the first two feast seasons, Passover and Pentecost, have already been fulfilled. We are living in the prophetic time of tabernacles. Passover, God's peace. I'll break it down more next week. We have peace with God. So we have the peace of God. Pentecost, power. And ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty power through God. But tabernacles, that's where we're living right now. 
you cannot interpret the signs of the times of tabernacles using your knowledge of Pentecost or Passover. You must understand the appointed feast season. May the Lord add a blessing to the teaching of his word. If you were listening today, I know it was different, but um, you're invited to our church. I'm getting us ready for the final feast season, entering into God's eternal rest. Not here on earth, but in glory with God. The Bible lets us know that if we shall confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we'll be saved. With the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. As I look at God's word and hear his chazon speaking into my spirit, I don't know how much time is left before Jesus Christ returns and the trumpet of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and those of us who are alive and remain shall be caught up with them to meet the Lord in the air. Rapture. I don't know how much time we have. Now, I'm not going to be one of those people who lie to you and say it's going to be on October 15th, blah, 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 yak, yak, yak. But I can tell you there are no more prophecies that need to be fulfilled for Jesus to return. None. The clock started ticking when Israel became a nation again. And that generation are little by little transitioning into glory. That generation won't pass until all those things are fulfilled that's been written in his word. And so, yeah, we're in the last of the last days. Of that, I am positive. But are you prepared? It's this simple. For God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son, that's Jesus, that whosoever believeth on Jesus would not perish but have everlasting life. Now you're going to say, but no, nah, you, you don't know what kind of life I'm living. Ah, the next verse is for you. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He's not condemning you for the way that you live. You're living the way you're living because you don't know God. What he will do is he'll judge Christians who live like you live because they claim to know God and act like they, you know, they're living for the devil. That's a whole nother message for a whole nother day. The Bible lets us know. The Bible lets us know God loves you. He sent Jesus to die for you. Everything else is your choice. Learning, you have to want to. Without Jesus Christ, you have no right to an audience with God the Father because we're unholy by ourselves. But when you receive Jesus Christ, he's made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. We're sanctified. We're made holy in Christ Jesus. So we have a right and the privilege to be able to stand before a holy God without a sense of shame and loss. If you don't know Jesus and you die in your sins, you're going to go to hell. And I know, you know, the witches and the warlocks, the demon-possessed will tell you, hell is not real. It's just a mental construct invented by men. Let me ask you one question. Come in closer. Do you think Jesus lied? Because Jesus taught about hell as a real place. And he came that we would never have to go there. I'd like to invite you right here and right now, make a decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord. We all needed a Savior. Only Jesus qualifies. I'm going to say a prayer. That's one of the nice things about being in this office. I kind of know the words that you're learning right now. So just, just say them after me. But it has, to, it has to be from the heart. It can't just be blah, 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 blah. Do you want to know that you have a relationship with God that rescues you from the fires of hell. Do you want to know? 
that you have security, everlasting life in, in Christ Jesus? If the answer to that is yes, repeat after me. Dear God in heaven, I believe Jesus Christ is your son. He died for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, he died for me. I receive you now as my Savior and my Lord. Jesus, live in my heart. I turn from my past ways. I give you everything that I need not carry with me anymore. Thank you for saving me today. Thank you that I'm a child of God. If you prayed that prayer today and you meant it, you just got what the Bible calls born again. Jesus tells Nicodemus, a Jewish rabbi, he says, you must be born again. Well, you just must. You just got born again. You turned your back on Satan and sin and you've accepted Jesus Christ as your way to the Father in eternal life. Hallelujah. If that's you, let us know in the comments. Reach out to us by email. We'd love to reach out to you, put something in your hand, and give you some direction as to the next steps. We're talking about, can you see the times? You need a church home. You know why? There's a whole bunch of misleading information out there in this wicked world. And you've heard a lot. But the simple truth is, those who are obedient to the Torah, the Word of God, shall be blessed. You want to advance while fixing, advance while repairing, advance while restoring? That's what happens in Christ Jesus as we are obedient to His Word. Thank you for tuning in today.